down south for me. But sooth, I, <laughs> sooth, I did not say sooth. Down sooth house. <laughs> oh, it, uh, about down sooth there, John. Let me tell you something. You just okay give her a good guy. go. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't swear, but I should also say fuck you. But um, bod. hey, hey, bud, take her easy there. How long can you keep up the charade? Anyways, as I'm complimenting him too, you guys. Um, <laughs> I forget what I was gonna say, you asshole. No, I was gonna say I like the fact that you're able to, because I get in trouble sometimes, trouble from like viewers. Why, are, why aren't you taking our side? Why, are, why are you like splitting the vote? Why are you doing this? Why are you criticizing the people who are supposed to be on our side? And what I like about you is that you're you're dropping the black pills, or maybe you've advanced a clown pill now. I, I think you might be one of the people who invented that. Um, to to the charade that goes on, where we can't criticize things as long as they're you know patriotic and American and and liberty and freedom based. It really gets to the point, and there's a story I want to get to probably after you leave where there's so many things that happen up here in Canada land where we're still under lockdowns, and people want these miracle miracles to happen where, you know, the average person just stood up for freedom and magically ended the lockdowns. This happens all the time here. Somebody posts a video that says, I got the lockdowns lifted, even though it lifted three weeks ago, and people just jump on board and, like, this guy's a hero. He's a working-class hero. And they give me guff, if you want to go Canadian stuff here. They give me real darn tune. I don't even know what accent. But they give me shit for for uh, pointing out that these people are either lying, they're exaggerating, they're grifting. And it's like, you have to be able to criticize the faults of your own side or else you're not going to get anywhere. And I yeah, look at, and- obviously, a two-party system in the United States, and there's not much choice there. But we have, like, six parties here. Nobody, you, nobody's forcing you to vote for Justin Trudeau. Sure, you might not like the result if you split the conservative vote, but you have to vote based on what the reality and truth is. I'm not just going to go out and vote for a conservative party that says you can't be biphobic. When it, and this is something that the conservative leader here said. Don't be biphobic this month, you guys. There's a lot of bi relationships out there that you got to be non-offensive to. What were you going to say? Yeah. I, w- I was going to say, I gave a speech recently, and there was a line in the speech which I think is, is especially pertinent, which is essentially that the only people who would ever complain about gatekeeping are the people who the gate was supposed to keep out in the first place. Mm. And it's like, I, and I, this sounds conceited and I don't mean it to be, but like I'm behind the desk for a reason. Like a lot of people, they look to me for information and commentary and whatever. And so my job is literally to just be constantly consumed in this cycle, in the history of political philosophy, conservative philosophy, particularly. And it's like, I know the grifters when I see them. It's like Joker. Mm-hmm. I know the grifters when and them. It's like, that's my job because I want us to have a successful right wing movement in this country. And so there are people who are like, wait a minute, you're telling me he's a grifter, but he waved an American flag and he said that he likes <laughs> freedom. And I'm like, that's the psyop though. That's how they get you. They, they have focus groups. They determine these things about the demographics, which they're trying to target. So just trust me, these people are grifters. They're acting in bad faith, but it, it kind of appeals to this idea that is outdated. I think it used to be true, but I think it's outdated now. This, this big tent, um, the silent majority, so to speak throughout history, The most successful movements, whether that's the civil rights movement, just anything, it was never a big tent movement. There was never this moment of mass awakening. When they win and they write the history books, they write it such that it sounds like, oh, and then one day everybody woke up and decided that two men can get married. And they were like, oh, it's just love. That makes sense. That's not actually how it works. It is a a hyper-focused group of probably between 10 to 50,000 people who literally, I I hate to use this because it connotes bad things, but blitzkrieg through the institutions and impose their will. That's how political change happens. It's not like, you know, all of a sudden everybody just got together and was like, let's stop wearing masks. This like moment of mass awakening will just never happen because people fundamentally lack agency. They are basically sheep. You've got maybe about 15% of the entire society that's capable of um, having the internal monologue and thinking critically about things. This doesn't mean that they're better people. I honestly think there's something to be said about a society that it doesn't require people to have to be engulfed in the news cycle and keeping up with these things. I think that people basically have a right to live in a society and not have to worry that the government is trying to destroy their lives and corrupt their children. We currently don't live in that society, but I don't blame people for wanting to perhaps naively just turn on their televisions and trust that they're being told the truth. It just so happens that they're not in this case. And so I think it's our job to, to kind of bear that load and allow for these people to criticize us saying that we're dividing the party, that we're punching rights, just take it on the chin, knowing that eventually it is through those efforts that we can 
for lack of a better word, purge the party of people who are uh, acting in bad faith and trying to occupy crucial volume for their own personal gain, be that through power, influence, wealth, or whatever. So that's why the, someone gave me one time the, the, the nickname, the CEO of conservative gatekeeping. I wear <laughs> that badge very proudly. Man, I, it sounds much harder than it is up here. All I have to do is point out the dates at which people are claiming, uh, <laughs> and I can and point them out for fraud to that. I want to get 